Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we will start the following session of automatic workflow. Uh, the first lecture is well, the first conference work is will be presented by. Okay, I'll take it. Now, it's here. Oh, okay. It will be presented by Lawrence Jose Oliva Gonzalez. You can start. Okay, we can start. This is the big fraction of early Newton life state estimator for the significant time to a linear distance. Lawrence and Rafael. Uh, okay, the outline of this talk is the following. Some introduction, primarily introduction, a problem statement, uh, the estimator, the proposed estimator, a numerical example, and the conclusion. Introduction. Um, the fractional calculus. This topic is really huge and interesting, but, but, but this time uh, is really to compact all of this um, equation in uh, uh, one minute. The rational calculus is an extension of the ordinary calculus. This topic takes the operators uh, derivative of an integral and consider the order with a real number. Fractional right? um, calculus, uh, the advantage for this operator is the non-locality property, uh, which uh, implies the memory property. For example, the, there are a lot of uh, definitions of uh, derivatives um, for example, the Caputo derivative. But in this talk, we uh, concentrate in the conformable fractional calculus. This operator is a limit operator, a simple limit operator. And this uh, operator uh, followed with uh, some consequences of uh, in, um, computational cost. We follow, uh, for example, numerical analysis. What is the uh, role of the fractional calculus? Fractional calculus and, and overall fractional calculus has been a fruitful tool for uh, developing and improving some numerical methods. Um, for example, the classical neutral Raphson method uh, has a uh, high depends on the initial approximation, leading to divergence problems. Moreover, the structure of the systems impacts in the method performance. With the fractional calculus and fractional compromise calculus, these problems are mitigated. Okay? Um, nowadays, different approach um, for estimators in this real-time linear systems uh, have been proposed to deal with this problem. The, the first approach is the uh, intelligent algorithms, neural networks, you see, responded learning, etc. Et the second approach is classical methods, the real methodology and interval estimators of H infinity topic. So, in this talk, the main goal and the methodology, methodology that will follow is the state estimation problem of the state type systems is transformed into a zero bridge, zero search problem or proof finding problem. So, in consequence, a novel state estimator based on the conformable neutral Rapson method is designed and analyzed. In this case, we present an efficiency of asymptotic observer which exhibits a fast convergence and is independent of the choice of the initial condition. Moreover, <clears throat> the total uh, knowledge of the system is not necessary. Times the problem of, of estimation is uh, carried out to a, a root uh, finding problem. Also, this approach has a um, high applicability branch because this uh, derivative of these is the operators is a simple limit operator. Okay, the problem statement. We take this uh, nonlinear system, autonomous linear system, and this is time. And obviously, the function um, is in some region where the disparity and analytic, analytic function, elliptic continuous function, all and all simple. So the origin of the state and the output variables are given by are given by the following uh, equation to and three. The state of the system uh, leads the, the following sequence, uh, equation two, and the output of the system 
system um, increase according to the equation terms, the tree, sorry. <clears throat> this operator is a composition operator, iterative function. So our goal is to estimate of the system one only with the known informations by the following hypothesis. The first hypothesis, this system is observable in the sense of discrete time systems. And the hypothesis two, the previous information of the output variable is stored as, uh, from the time n minus one to time e. So we take the following uh, vector denoted by uh, y uh, and this means um, this vector uh, contains the, the information referred to hypothesis two. And as we see in equation four, this uh, vector we can uh, contain all the information of the, of the systems. So let's subdefine the vector function uh, by this function, as we can see, is a classical root finding problem. These roots are actually the, actually the states of the system at the time instant a minus n minus one. So the fractional order of Newton, like you say, estimator, this state problem, um, as we can see, we only need to solve the equation five. So we begin with the basics. We consider the operator, a simple operator in a suitable space, normally a Harus of space. And uh, we have the following condition. What is a fixed point? We try to include it with a fixed point iteration. Fixed point is a simple point which satisfies this condition, uh, sorry, no. um, this condition and definition one. The problem of finding, uh, finding the fixed, fixed points on an operator has been uh, researched uh, over the years uh, with different results, but in several approach. One of the most popular techniques is the iterative uh, approximations. The most common is the Picard iteration. The Picard iteration is even in uh, equation six, six sorry. Uh, consider that this, um, this iteration uh, consider a sequence. This sequence generated by, by six uh, under safety condition. Um, this sequence converts precisely to a fixed point of uh, C. The Picard iteration is a fixed point iteration. We have the following definition, function two. Uh, this sequence um, carry on with a simple concept of convergence order. This concept uh, means that the speed of the convergence of this sequence, uh, as we can see in remark there is remark three, <coughs> the convergence order of the sequence is related to its convergence speed. More um, a higher convergence order implies a higher convergence speed. So the conformable fractional order the Newton method. Newton method, not the estimator. This is the Newton method only. All the details of this um, estimator we can uh, see in the paper, in the problem. It's uh, really uh, interesting how to present this uh, method. By conformable, uh, in equation eight, we can see this um, matrix. This matrix is uh, an, ex an extension of the Jacobian matrix, but in the conformable order. So, um, and this operator is a Hadamard operator, probably. And this uh, Newton TNT method uh, contains uh, the classical Newton method where alpha is equal to one. So, all the hypotheses, as we can see, are the same hypotheses to classical Newton method. Numerical method A, as a local convergence order, at least two, at least quadratic, regardless the choice of the fractional order. Number four, this uh, method is a simple picker iteration. That's why we can analyze with the fixed point theory. And all of this, we can uh, see the details in the paper. So we propose the following state estimator for nonlinear system. We take 
uh, these functions in part and put in this method, this simple method. Okay, and we obtain uh, this is the method, the method in equation nine, where f um, is a conformable Jacobian matrix of f. It's an extension of Jacobian matrix, no problem. With a function five, in this case, this uh, Jacobian matrix is equal to the following um, uh, matrix. So we can rewrite the equation nine as equation 11. Parameter A can be chosen as the minimum value that each state of the system can reach. It's clear, it's clear that 11 has this operator. Science, this uh, method is a simple card operator. So uh, if there is there exists a fixed point um, x of the operator epsilon, then the sequence can generate but through iteration 11 converge to the fixed point. Moreover, this fixed point is actually the state of the system one at the time instant. Uh, the time instant. Indeed, <laughs> if we take this uh, fixed point and put in the uh, operator, we can see that these there are equal, and when we can obtain is zero. But this Jacobian matrix, by hypothesis, um, is not similar in the fixed point. So we have to change the um, roots of the system, the states of the system. We have the following theorem. The proof uh, is not really easy, uh, but you can see in the paper and the sketch in the paper. Okay, so we present the numerical example, simple numerical example. Um, to consider the following discrete time nonlinear system. This system is a Volterra system. Volterra system whose um, dynamics usually describes um, a biological system, interaction between uh, prey and predators. So it's really simple. The system is uh, present as equal limit when the parameters has a specific value. So we can construct from 16, uh, the function five with the following uh, information. So also it's possible to construct the fractional order estimator, simple, but um, all the condition, all the hypothesis in this part, all the hypothesis in this um, method and the hypothesis of the theory uh, are fulfilled so we have no time to, to explain how to obtain this situation. So uh, all the conditions uh, satisfied and fulfilled, we can use different, this, this uh, estimator in order to obtain uh, the, the, the actually the states of the, of the systems. Our output variable, variable are the addition of the two populations for the predator and prey. So the simulation are conducted in MATLAB, um, where we perform a comparison between, between the fractional order and the classical Newton method. Uh, some criteria, uh, we consider the following values with uh, some uh, simple time. The system of the number of prey and predator never reached zero. That is why we set a1 and a2 equal to zero. So we obtain the following results. First simulation, we set the initial approximation equal to seven. X1, X2 equal to four. As we can see, we obtain a really good estimation, but um, apparently the convergence is really fast from the 0 0.101 to uh, time. In the case, estimation of the state uh, x1 and x2. But the advantage of this uh, novel estimator is uh, several. One of these is the iteration. We try to uh, obtain a 15 iteration uh, by each state, by each point of uh, estimation, each point, each iteration. 
see. Uh, here. Uh, here. In each of the initials, we try to estimate the state in the same instant. Okay. So, but another advantage is the uh, wire regions. So, what is the, the wire regions compared to classical electron transfer uh, method? Is we but we take another initial approximation and the classical electron transfer never converge. Okay. Yeah, we can see the ground pressure. We design and analyze, analyze a fractional of the state estimator for this retained linear system. The pressure approach takes the state estimation problem to a zero six problem or root finding problem. The proposed estimator is based on the fractional order extension of the Wendell Newton method. This estimator presents a lower number of iterations needed to achieve convergence and wider regions of the direction for zeros. The results. Obtained through numerical simulation show that the proposed state estimator is highly effective and accurate. Okay. Discussion <clears throat> to the best of knowledge, as far as we know, we present the first conformable fractional order estimator for nuclear time nonlinear systems. What happened when uh, we consider non autonomous systems and what happened if we take a measurement noise? Yeah? Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. So, anyone has any questions? I have one. Okay. It is, um, it is, this algorithm is really robust under the, under params, under a certain parameter. Yes. yes. But that is difficult to, to analyze the mathematical techniques is uh, really difficult to understand. That's why the conformal reflection algorithm is uh, really a new topic from 10 years. But this was. Uh, another question? Sure. I'm safe. <laughs> Sí, 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 we continue with the following uh, talk by Federico. Federico Augusto with the paper nonlinear model based trajectory tracking control for drying process of spirulina plantesis and red chili in a tight tunnel dryer. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. And um, what are we doing? Um, the, the topic of this. Uh, this research is the nonlinear model basic trajectory, a tracking control for driving process of experimental latencies, and actually in a tight tunnel drive. Uh, the author is Federico, me, it's me, uh, Francisco, Jorge, and Mary. Uh, I will introduce with this online, online because uh, I had to do uh, uh, a motivation of this research and 
Secondly, the abstract and then introduction. Before the results, I give you the model and control strategy implemented in this research. And then the results, the most important results in this research. And finally, I will give you a conclusion. The motivation of this research is the use of sustainable agriculture and energy. Okay, it focuses in the increase of the food demand uh, because uh, you know uh, the world population increase, so uh, increase the food demand. Then the conservation is the most important thing in this issue, uh, using drain methods, focus in drain convection, modeling and automatic automatic control. Is the importance uh, when you use a um, mathematical model because these processes are um, are are implemented uh, has has shown in this in this uh, picture, uh, but um, when you use mathematical model for improve the efficiency, you can in emerging tools and methods for driving process and this new control strategy call it um, two-stage control, is permit, allows, or per per permit maintaining the nutritional and sensory properties using control strategies. Um, in our research, a new control strategy for driving process was implemented for control the product temperature in these two products, red chili and spirulina platensis, for tracking trajectory of the product and air temperature. Uh, the control strategy uh, leverages that the head supply for the first product, Spirulina platensis, um, uh, yeah, uh, to enhance the heavy performance of the second product. Uh, I will give you some results about it. And the inherent uncertainties in the model were considered, and the control strategy is capable of effectively tracking of the trajectory purpose. The introduction is the increase of population increasing the food demand. So we need the conservation and then the draining process is the most important uh, process for, uh, for its conservation. But there are different types of draining process. In fact, uh, we are using a convective drying process and to dry spirulina platensis and red chili. Okay, why this, uh, these two products? Because uh, Spirulina Platensis is implemented as a dietary supplement due to protein content, high protein content, omega and another um, pigments important in this uh, particular uh, product. And red chili has a high fiber content, vitamins and metals. Uh, the, the drying is crucial for preserving quality, specifically the, what, uh, what type of dry, uh, convective drying process, and the control system should be implemented uh, to innovate approach uh, using nonlinear model control. The mathematical model in this uh, in this process uh, were was uh, made was done sorry. Uh, with the following assumptions, air is in uncompressible fluid, air velocity is constant, kinetics depends only to air, temperature and air velocity, uh, Newton's kinetics is considered, considered. Uh, there are no head losses with exteriors, uh, hot air is provided by a heater, and the system is homogeneous. Okay, uh, the following three equations, one, two, three, is the process of the model of use to the to the driver, okay? And the states is the moisture content, uh, product temperature, and air temperature. About the kinetic driving, we can observe uh, that the equation for uh, the kinetic driving of spirulina platensis is is, is is depends on, depends of the states air temperature and air velocity, but in this case, uh, the air velocity is constant. Uh, in the other hand, uh, red chili 
it's just to depends of the air temperature. Why drying this this uh, these products? Because uh, spirulina is a cyanobacteria that grows in a liquid medium. Okay, uh, have this this product uh, has high protein content, beta carotene, omegas, fucosamine, and chlorophyll. It is considered a, as a superfood. Okay, uh, it, in fact, it's like a, a highlight is, is the, the conservation of this product is consumed uh, by households uh, and is for this it's important to dry this uh, this product, no? This cyanobacteria. The red chili fruit is widely used in different countries and it, it has a blue balloon, contains vitamin N, A and C and fiber, iron and calcium. The organoleptic uh, properties can be damaged if the drying process is not appropriate. Okay, and so enzymatic reactions can turn down the product, uh, brown the product, and of course, low flavor. The control strategy. The control strategy um, is taking the model of this, the process, equation six, seven, and eight, and uh, we can define the tracking error. Okay, the tracking error we, now, we propose. Uh, um, a trajectory for the product temperature and the dynamics of the product temperature is uh, the following the follow equation. Considering all the non-linearities of the model has some uncertainty, we can obtain the equation 10. And for the develop stage one, uh, the dynamics of reference tracking error is considered. So we can observe uh, that the dynamics of the of the error of the product temperature is proportional to the error um, the, of product temperature. And so we can obtain the equation 12. This equation 12 is important because we observe that the air temperature depends only the trajectory proposed. Okay, if we consider um, alpha positive, uh, we can observe in equation thirteen that the dynamic of the error, yeah, it depends again just to the um, to the proposed trajectory of the product temperature. For develop stage two, the air temperature trajectory tracking. And that, and the dynamic, um, and the dynamic of the air temperature tracking is considered in equation fourteen and fifteen. Okay, we we have uh, we has we had uh, seen that the the states depends just to the to the proposed trajectory. So, uh, considering this um, and the question eight, the question eight, yeah, is the model, okay? Uh, we can define the error of air temperature and substituting, uh, substituting, sorry, um, in equation eight, okay? So, if we impose, impose, a uh, reference proportional integral and, and derivative, we can obtain the control uh, control improve expression that follow in in equation eighteen. So with this uh, control input, um, the we are observing yeah. uh, we are observing that the control input depends just to the uh, product temperature trajectory. So, considering all these equations for the control, the two stage control, the moisture of the pyrulina platensis uh, achieved to the equilibrium at more or less uh, 155 minutes, but some, uh, some research uh, or, or studies um, a child to the equilibrium at 140 to 200 minutes. And in the second case, 
moisture of, of red chili, we observe that the, uh, the, the moisture content attracted to the equilibrium at 1,040. And other studies say that the moisture content attracted to the equilibrium at uh, more or less uh, 1,100. So, considering this, the energy used to dry spirulina platense prepares the red chili for its subsequent drying. We can observe uh, that the, the first phase uh, of, of drying, or constant drying gray phase, the gradients decrease in the moisture is observed, okay? And this phase is, con is controlled by convection, okay? Then, the second phase, decreasing drying gray phase, this phase is uh, the driving rate decrease and the moisture removal slows down. This phase is controlled by diffusion, okay? Uh, by diffusion in, 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 in the material, okay? Within the material. Uh, and the last one, equilibrium phase, phase uh, here the system is stabilized, stabilized and no more moisture can be removed for the product, okay? In the last one. Okay. To tracking trajectories, we observe that the product temperature follow, yeah, or follow or track the trajectory purpose, yeah. Uh, for the first product, Estrolina patensis, we do need to achieve to 50, de uh, 50 degrees, and then uh, for a uh, dry um, red chili, we need to achieve to 65 degrees, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so um, we use uh, a Bessel polynomial. This Bessel polynomial, uh, uh, this control follow the Bessel polynomial. No? The planning of tracking the reference trajectory of the product can be observed in, in, in figure three. And due to the kinetic driving is only valid in a range uh, of temperature and velocity, the optimal values was considered uh, to the drying process. As I mentioned before, um, 50 degrees for spirulina platensi, uh, 65 degrees for uh, red chili. Okay? Okay. Uh, before, uh, the head supply for the, by the heater is showing in figure four. And uh, for spirulina platensi, we need a heat flow of uh, 55 uh, kilowatts and uh, 84 kilowatts to red chili. Okay, as conclusions, we, we validate this control strategy and the control strategy, strategy uh, implement what's able to tracking the reference trajectory for product and air temperature. Uh, the two stage control uh, within, with tracking trajectories can be implemented in for the, the, the dehydration process. And this control strategy with tracking trajectory allows reduce energy consumption uh, for dry red chili using spirulina platensis uh, power supply. Okay, these are the reference. And my research interest is uh, implementations of computational tools, mathematical modeling, chemical and process engineering, process system engineering, automatic control, optimization, agroindustrial, energy, and biotechnology. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Is there uh, any question? Position? Uh, you, you need to require to know a lot of the model, right? Yeah, yeah. This this control strategy uh, is is using the model of the of the process. Yeah, I need uh, some parameters, uh, constant parameters. In this case, are constant parameters, but yeah, yeah. it's yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's based on, on model, yeah. Questions? All the parameters should be known? Yeah, uh, the parameters are constant, alpha, uh, alpha one, alpha two, um, alpha i, alpha i, um, and rho, yeah. Uh, futures, uh, in, a, in a future, we consider the error it uh, has a uncertainty and yeah, 
in this case, all the parameters is now. Okay. Any questions? Thank you so much for your presentation. Okay. We continue with following if there is a speaker in this room, please can give me your presentation. Es el es <laughs> Okay, okay, we can start. Please, make sure. Oh, yeah. Once again, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I, I'm Victor, and I will present the following conference work. Which title is a continuous wait, a continuous discrete ERC for linear time varying systems under non-uniform discrete measurements and external disturbances. That's it. It's okay. It's only the laser. <laughs> so nowadays there are two main important issues in the control of any dynamical system. The first one is the presence of external disturbances. Uh, that can drastically affect the behavior of any dynamical system. Uh, Although many algorithms ex exist to closely project external disturbances, one of the most studied one is the active disturbance reaction controller, which main idea is to estimate and reject the total uncertainty of the system, that is the sum of the external disturbances, unknown dynamics, and uncertain parameters. The structure of this algorithm consists of a trajectory differentiator, which consists in a smooth piecewise uh, continuous reference into a continuous function. However, however, in this work, we do not take into consideration this dynamic. 
The other one is the extended state observer that not only estimates the measurable elements of the state, it also estimates the total uncertainty by considering it an additional state of the system. And finally, a controller that stabilizes and rejects the total uncertainty of the system. Another important issue in the control of any dynamical system is the lack of continuous measurements. Uh, three main approaches exist for this task. The first one is to discretize the proposed, the proposed algorithm. However, this has the disadvantages that it loses the knowledge of the intersampling period, lack robustness of the model uncertainties, and the, discreti the discretized model is usually approximated. The another approach is the, the delay one, which transforms the discrete measurement in the output as a, as a delay. And finally, an impulsive approach where a continuous model is studied in is coupled with the output in discrete time. Many algorithms is, exist for this task. Well, one of the most recent ones and studied is the output predictor plus the state observer, which main idea is to predict the behavior of the output between the intersampling period. And it was probably studied for high end observers by the impulsive approach or by the stabilization of nonlinear systems in a delay approach. The active disturbance rejection controller it was previously coupled with the output predictor plus the state observer in a normatic muscle actuator, which uh, guarantees a practical stability without uh, proposing a criteria for tuning the, the proposed algorithm. So one of the main questions here is to how, how can we tune the proposed algorithm by any linear time invariant system? So the main objective of this work is to design and analyze and analyze a continuous discrete active disturbance reaction controller for multiple input, multiple output linear time variance systems on their external disturbance that we denote as pro, and on their non-uniform discrete measurements in the output as denoted as y. So for general assumption of this system, the first one that the, the first we take into consideration the following ones. The first one that is that the system is controllable and observable. The second one, that the external disturbance is Q times continuously differentiable and bounded. And finally, that the this variable that is related with the intersampling period is strictly positive and bounded. So we can transform the, our previous linear time variance system with respect with this change of variables as a consequence of assumption two in the following linear time variance system. Um, with this structure, we can propose a continuous discrete active disturbance reaction controller, which has the following structure. The first element is actually a feedback controller uh, coupled with the uh, rejection of the external disturbance. And the estimation of all the state and the total disturbance is done by a Luenberger observer. And notice that the Luenberger observer is related with the variable omega, which is the output predictor. So if we define the following error estimation, we can propose the we can study the linear time variance system previously proposed in a close loop with the proposed controller. We have the equations part A, part B. However, this set of impulsive differential equations or hybrid differential equations can be transformed or can be expressed as a set of delayed differential equations. So if we integrate the, the output predictor between this interval, we have the expression six. And by taking into consideration the expression seven, we can transform this previous set of impulsive differential equations into a set of delayed differential equations. In particular, notice that the, it is related to a distributed delayed differential equation, and we can show the main result of this work. Suppose that assumption one, three are satisfied, and uh, furthermore, we assume that sigma zero related to the Q times the uh, continuous differential behavior of the external disturbances is equally to zero. So the proposed the linear time invariant system with enclosed with the proposed algorithm is asymptotically stable if the following linear matrix inequalities, which are uh, sufficient conditions, are satisfied. And furthermore, the structure of the control, the algorithm going from the controller and observer has the following structure. The main idea of the proof of this uh, the, of this result is to use some theory of Lyapunov Krasovsky candidate functionals. Uh, the following Lyapunov Krasovsky candidate functional, which is in fact a pos is positive definite. And by defining, by defining the, the following chain of variables, and as a consequence of some inequalities and algebraic properties, 
we can show that the derivative of this Lyapunov uh, Krasovsky candidate functional is negative definite. So by the theorem of three dot one of this book, we can prove the main result. So we study an academical example. We assume that the linear time variance system has the following structure, which we can notice that A is in fact a not curved with a not curved with a matrix. So it is it must be stabilized in closed loop. We are we it can be easily seen that the system is controllable and observable. Uh, the structure of the external disturbance has the following is the following one. Notice that it has an impulsive behavior be, between this time interval. And furthermore, we assume that in, before this time, the, the, the output is almost continuous. And after this time, the behavior of the output is, in, is discrete. We study the proposed algorithm with respect to other ones. The first one is the standard version of the active disturbance reaction controller. That is, we assume we do not take into consideration the behavior of the predictor. Uh, because we assume continuous measurements. And another one is to discretize the, the standard version by the forward Euler method by taking into consideration this variable. Uh, all the algorithms proposed have the same gains, and it was tuned by the solving the set of linear matrix inequalities previously shown. Uh, it, but, so by applying Yalmi and Sedumi, for this value, we have the following algorithm gains values. Finally, the, per the performance of all the proposal, the proposed algorithms uh, will be studied by the integral absolute error, the integral square error, and the rule mean square error. So in the first two pictures, we see the behavior of the state. Notice that the, before this specific time, the continuous discrete version and the, and the standard version has almost the same behavior because it almost the behavior of the output is almost continuous. And after this specific time, where the output is now uh, sampling in a, in a large intersampling period, and the presence of the uh, impulsive behavior in the external disturbance drastically changed the behavior of the standard, the standard active disturbance direction and the discretized one. In fact, the standard version has the largest overshoot and the largest transient phase. However, the discrete version has the smallest overshoot. However, it can be seen that it has the worst uh, performance to reject external disturbance. With respect to the estimation, we can see that the continuous discrete version has the best, uh, the best performance because it has the smallest overshoot in general and also has the smallest transient phase. With respect to the controller, we can see that the, once again, the continuous discrete version has the best behavior. And uh, finally, uh, we can conclude by the index performance use that not only the continuous discrete version has the best performance to controlling the, the system in closed loop, it also has the best behavior in estimating the state. So as a conclusion, an active disturbance reaction controller uh, was designed, uh, monocoupled with an output predictor, was designed and analyzed for linear time variant systems. This analysis was done in a delayed approach the main results conclude as synthetic stability under non-uniform discrete measurements and external disturbances. And furthermore, we design some criteria to tune the proposed algorithm by solving a set of linear matrix inequalities. And in a future work, the obtained result will be extended for strict triangular nonlinear systems. These are these are some of the references used in this work in this presentation. And thank you everyone for paying attention. Thank you, Victor. Do you have any questions for Victor? Anyone? That is good. <laughs> Are you smooth with another uh, type of discrete uh, this this discrete? Discretization of this of the regards of your model has proved another one. For example, um, I don't know, um, you just Euler discretization, discretization. Uh, but another one is more for, accu accurate for the results or for the knowledge. For the, uh, the, the, the analysis. Uh -huh. uh, remember, I don't want to use the discretization. This is a good question, but. I don't want to use a, discret a discretization because of the main disadvantages. Uh, I 
just right here. Mm -hmm. Three main advantages of the digitization approach. The, one of the most important ones is that it loses, loses the knowledge of the intersampling period, and it can be seen in the in the in the main results. In fact, because we can see that the discrete version mm -hmm. has a, the worst behavior between the continuous discrete version and the standard version is because we discretize this model with respect uh, disc the discretization after this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So one of the main advantages of this the, uh, of the approach that we studied in this work is that I do not require to discretize the model. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? No. Thank you so much, Victor. Thanks. Um, we have ten minutes. Wow. <laughs> ten minutes. Three. <laughs> The following talk is uh, Diego Hernán. Yes, sir. Can you presentation? Yes, yes. If there is, if there are in the room, please do your presentation. Thank you. Please. Oh. Even
shape, we can continue with the following thought by Diego Hernan. Yes. You will then, mm -hmm. please, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, my name is Diego Hernan Gaetan Rivas. Uh, I'm going to talk about the work called on the novel design an FPGA implementation and a passive PD control for a DC motor. Uh, okay. Oh, well, as in production, the DC motors are a classical trend range for control engineers where model based control can be designed. Also, controllers can do not require a mathematical model can be designed as the classical PAD or the Mandani light frequency controller. Uh, the MLFC is more suitable for, for strongly nonlinear systems than PAD, and its design methodology is more intuitive. Uh, among the most used MLFC are the PD and incremental PI types, which one uses a differentiator. But although this operation amplifies the noise, mostly it is not considered an issue as one can find in the literature. Uh, for the implementation of a fast control system, the use of uh, FPGA is gaining popularity among engineers. Researchers have made several advantage and implementation of FCS for DC motors in FPGAs a report below. In the table one, uh, I put some latent research about FPGA implementation for DC motors. And they don't speak, they don't explain that very well the how they implement the uh, uh, derivatives, but we we try to do in the other way, in the other way. The novel contribution for this article about the implementation in FPGA on IFC for DC motors uh, uh, follows the integration of a robust sliding mode differentiator with a PD-based MLFC, a parametrizable and modular architecture design and a custom HDL synthesis of the FCS in Verilog uh, with RPL. The RSMD is robust against abundant noise. That's why we use uh, MLFC has four main components. The classification interface, they modify the inputs to the FASI domain so they can be interpreted and compared with rules in the rule base. The inference mechanisms evaluate which control rules are relevant at the current time and decide what input to the plan should be. The rule base contains the knowledge of the control of the system and inform a set of rules and the falsification interface it converts the conclusion reach by the interface mechanism into crisp inputs to the plant. And the figure one shows a block diagram uh, for, of a closed loop control system with a fussy control for a DC motor. We have a subtractor. Uh, uh, derivative the gains the fuzzy controller with the, the four main parts PW the process or the plan in this case is the DC motor as the encoder and one decoder in order to get the, the speed and the the sense of the rotation of the rotor uh, to this uh, inputs and output members in function to design a generic controller that can be used with motor of different capacities. Normally said, and inputs and outputs are considered. Preliminary simulation tests were carried out with three, five, and seven members in function for the tracking of a constant reference signal, obtaining a steady state error uh, of a 1.173 and 0.4%, respectively. We're looking for an error less than 1.1%, 1%, I'm sorry. And for the sake of lower hardware consumption, we decide to use as five members in function, which are agree with other words, for example, five. In, okay. uh, in the figure two, uh, we show the membership function in the for the inputs and outputs. Uh, for inputs, we use the C uh, membership function like this, and the S membership function with the triangular ones, and the five 
the perceived function as large negative, small negative, zero, uh, small positive, and large positive. And in the case for the for the output, we just use the triangular membership function that helps us in in the designing of the the classification interface. Uh, we can make in the easiest way the the calculus. Uh, implementation of the FCS. It was designed implement implement the architecture based on active roles. Since it consumes fewer resources than based on parallel processing and requires less time than that based on sequential processing. In that case, they process both active and, and inactive roles. Uh, we took the architecture in the reference six. Uh, we just changed uh, the membership function circuit that is here. We we just add the 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 C. We add the support to the C and F membership function, and we change that counter with a state matching the other blocks of the same from the, the in the blackboard. The differentiator, the derivative tends to amplify noise, uh, which poses a significant drawback for its physical implementation. A common solution is to use only a error increment and approximate differentiator or linear differentiator. Nevertheless, the use of uh, the RSMD allows for more effective operation in the process, presence of noise. For example, in the figure uh, four, uh, we add a same signal with a, with noise, but the the derivative amplify uh, the noise and and you it's difficult difficult to see that the signal no in that case, but in the case of the RSMD response, uh, remains some noise, but you can see more clearly the the signal no, and this is uh, very good for the physical implementation. Because we have a lot of uh, noise no, in our systems. Uh, the RSMD sample equation represented below, where FK is the signal to be derived, and C0K is the estimation of the FK, uh, and C1K is the estimation of the derivative of FK. Alpha and lambda are calculated under the inequalities. The, the C uh, less than alpha. And Mayor than zero, and the, the other one. Uh, the pedalium, the model that generates pulse modulation, consists in a counter connected to the comparator, comparator. Together with a normalized control signal, the counter uses a rising falling type because he has those two special features. The on of the late time is shortened, and the other Modulation and it eliminates certain, certain harmonics when the reference signal is a sine wave. And the quadrature encoder the coding circuits to obtain both the speed and the direction. The architecture shows in the that we use in the figure six. The fixed space method was implemented instead of the fixed time. We have uh, the bones circuit, we is fit with the Signals A and B from the, the uh, encoder, they uh, eliminate glitches. Then the next block, the pulses, they integrate both signals in just one in order to the, the block time can calculate the, the period. No? And the spin is a state machine, and uh, they detect the direction of the rotation of the rotor. Well, only the, one of the main characteristics. To consider for the architecture use is how the data flow is controlled both between models and between them. According to AIC, it's a complex situation that arises from the implementing frontal unit for a general system due to the segmentation in the FEA and implementation of the MPA and the hierarchical design that necessary for a fuzzy controller for a DC motor. In the same goal, they propose use a soft core data flow. The handling the uh, FCS and also they manage the inputs and outputs. But we try to use all in the in hardware. The entire design was to be kept there. In that way, we reduce the design complexity and simplify the communication because it's easier 
communicates two blocks in the same uh, uh, part, for example, hardware or software. But if you want to communicate hardware and software, it's more difficult to do that. Uh, therefore, a modular architecture was used following the guidelines showing none. And it's illustrated in, in, in seven, the modular architecture, when we have uh, uh, in the control unit, a uh, state machine and the data path. And we have the signal start and end in order to well, start the, 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 the start machine. And when they finish, they end this, this end signal to the next one no? and it's in, in Kafka. Well, the process design for the hardware implementation for the general system shown in the figure eight. Uh, we have this structure, the derivative, we treat the gains, the fuzzy controller, PWM, but some of the models, the main one, have their, their, their own model control unit. And we we have we made this part the decoder on 32 bits, uh, and we put and we we made 16 bits in the other part of the circuits. And experimental result, the FCS is designed in Verilog for FPGA implementation. The FCS is integrated with one FPGA, the Max uh, uh, for Antera, Max 10 series the, in the development board, the 10 light uh, H-bridge, um, 12 permanent magnet DC motor and a logic analyzer. Uh, for comparison purposes, three metrics shared by the reports are analyzed, analyzed in the table two. The occupation results shown in all eight just consider the soft core. They just you consider the control unit and the IO management. Management, I'm sorry. And the metrics are register, logic elements, and memory bytes. We use less register and memory bytes, just more logic elements, but uh, in our system, we make or we report all the system, uh, the data path and the control path, and they just report the the control path because that path is in the soft core, and they use uh, the FPA in order to make a, a that core. Well, the testing uh, the fast control system in the figure tens. Uh, so the speed changes are tested, achieving a maximum maximum error of 1.86%. One, 1. And the figure 11, a reference in constant motion is test. Uh, we can follow the, the reference. We have a, 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 a lot of deviation in the cross by zero. Uh, we think that it's by the, the 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 encoder that we use uh, because the resolution is very low and also uh, is when the, the the speed is high they start to fail. No? We have to maintain a certain range, uh, but this is uh, this in this way that that enco that encoder. And the final test involved are bringing a magnet close to the encoder disk to slow down the rotor, so the rotor rotation, thereby simulating a load in the rotor. The results shown in the figure 12. Despite the applied force to stop the rotor, there was only a slight decrease in the average speed. Uh, but we, we return to the, the, the speed before you take away the, the, the magnet. And the conclusion, we implemented a, a well, the first is implement hardware lack capacity to be modified. The FCA based on the liberative action suffer from noise problem. We propose to design a PD type uh, for a DC motor, normalized fashion with a modular architecture with a RSMD. The above mentioned issues are overcome, real time results. Show its effectiveness and good performance by successfully tracking stepwise and a sinusoidal reference signal. We obtain errors less than 2%. We 
with a 16 bits uh, and a fixed fixed point format. Um, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Diego. Yes, yes. Uh, is there any questions? Or questions? Presentations? Any questions? You have to ask yes, yes, of course. Uh, you have been tested your algorithm with perturbations? Uh, yes, we well in the in the process. We we made a simulation with with noise. And that the with noise where uh, we the output of the in the motor in the retroalimentation loop we okay. we add the 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 noise the, the noise no in this case that are results from the 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 physical prototype no this this uh, this noise is from the the measurements no is it's because it's, it's in real time, no? But in simulation, we just do that, no? You are the that source of, of noise in the loop. Uh -huh. uh, for example, uh, if you uh, put your uh, motor mm -hmm. from the way and heat up, for example, and your parameter change, mm -hmm. this change uh, may appear like a um, uh, disturbance. And the processes, uh, the FUSI or uh, this combination of FUSI and PD uh, will be robust in your your algorithm. Mm -hmm. sure. Well, uh, we 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 try to do well, try to test in different ways, but we maybe we need to test in other conditions. We just we just made tested like this and other we try to stop the rotor with hands or with other kinds and they continue to to do the correct speed but maybe we need more tests no for, for that case but we we try to do several tests you know, for, for them for them i can see you use a differentiator using a sliding mode oh, sliding mode yes and that you use another a differentiator, for example, mm -hmm. using a, a fractional um, fractional order differentiator. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, it's very useful for your um, approach. Okay, we it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But yes, I have to write down that we just proved the with the changing the error. And with the linear, but the linear is is awful, no, because it's divided by the time, no. Yeah. And we are working with sixteen bits, no. The the world is very slow, is slow for that. And for the in the for the uh, the change in the error, uh, we we notice that the we we. Grow the the gain for the 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 derivative gain, but it doesn't affect m much. No, it's kind of I can say uh, low sensitivity. No, in that case, no. But it's a good idea to other other one. No, uh -huh. thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the thank attention. you. Gracias. Sí. 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 Sí
O sea, si sabía que cambia ni iban a decir algo. Sí, de cambio. 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 Algo, algo de Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon to all. Uh, my name is Manuel, and as you can see, I'm going to present my paper that it's called Adaptive Games Light Mode Observer for the Estimation of Online Dynamics in a Heavy Metal Bioremediation Process. That it's made by me and my PhD advisors. So, okay, I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to, uh, in these slides, I'm going to talk about some introduction, a very Brief introduction about this this topic. Uh, later, I'm going to talk about the design of this type of robust observers that we are going to apply to this type of process. Uh, and specifically, we are going to apply some sliding mode observers to this um, problem. And we are going to present some results of these uh, observers and the conclusions. So, let's start with the introduction. Um, so. We are going to talk about some problem, uh, a very newer problem, and not newer, it's an always problem, that it's the waste water problem, that it's a problem of water contamination by a lot of types of, for example, uh, some type of industries, for example, textile or metallurgic, um, some type of industries, of course, they um, have some type of um, heavy metals, that drop to, for example, some rivers and something like that, like that. For example, in this in this figure, you can see, for example, this type of of, of problem. And of course, we have some type of um, um, prototypes that we can use to solve this problem. For example, one one type of this prototype is, of course, a bioreactor. A bioreactor is a an, a tank that. We can, for example, we can fill with this um, water uh, contaminated or polluted with some heavy metal, for example, zinc or uh, um, a lot of types of heavy metals. And we can use microalgae or some, for example, um, a lot of things that we can use to remove these metals. And of course, we have some troubles in these bioreactors, for example, uh, of course, it's are, are very expensive, and of course, the sensors, of course, are expensive, but not only these are invasive to this process. For example, if you have some process in these bioreactors, you can um, I don't how I don't know how to say, but you can uh, pollute this this um, with this culture with your microorganisms with this, for example, with these sensors. So, of course, we have an alternative of this this implementation in real time with this this alternative of course is the use of, of uh, observers but uh, we have the different type of observers 
we are uh, using in this in this paper uh, sliding mode based observers and of course we have uh, a lot of uh, research a lot of information in the literature that we can find but these type of observers are for example in, implemented in, in some um, mechanical system or electrical system but in this type of system in this bioprocess are more difficult because uh, of course we have more unknown parameters on unknown dynamics that we have to estimate for example we want to estimate uh, no parameters and for example and external disturbance that are um, associated for example to the dilution factor that is in uh, our um, control input to this bioreactor of course we have more unknown parameters for example um, the growth rate is this uh, for these these microorganisms uh, have some specific growth rate the, they are going to grow um, depending on what how much um, biomass or substrate we have so we want to to estimate these parameters of course we want to use um, um, sliding modes but we we are going to add some adaptive gains to these algorithms to estimate these, these unknown parameters. So uh, we want to design some robust observers to, to this, this problem, of course. So we're going to start uh, um, focusing on the mathematical model of this uh, bio process. Of course, we have some uh, complex dynamical model of this, this type of Are shown as and, and in this equation, in this equation one. Well. So X are our bio biomass biomass um, dynamics that depends on mu. Mu is our growth rate of the microorganism. So X are of course our of microorganism. This theta are uh, of course this D are our uh, dilution factor that have some. These theta are our uh, external disturbance associated to this dilution factor. This dilution factor is, of course, our control input. And this beta are the mortality rate of the microorganism. These S dynamics, the second equation, are the substrate dynamics that depends on this Y. Y is our, um, uh, it's the, the, a uh, parameter that uh, is, um, depends how much the the, the, the dynamic of, of this this parameter grows. Of course, we have some uh, this 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 parameter of this are of course the the substrate minus this this s bar are the input substrate to the to the bio reactor. These M dynamics are the dynamics of the, the metal concentrations. Of course, we have some metal concentration to, in, this, in this culture inside the beer reactor. And Q are associated to these this, this dynamics, M. And of course, what we want to do in this paper, we want to estimate, of course, the unknown parameters. Some unknown parameters in this, in this model are, of course, these theta are the, the, the disturbance associated to this control input. Of, of course, we don't know this mu, that is the growth rate of the microorganism. And also, we want to estimate this M, that is the concentration of the metal of this bio process. So we have some assumptions, of course, the biomass uh, is, is, is strictly positive. Of course, we don't have negative biomia, biomass. Uh, of course, are bonded. Uh, also, the substrates are bonded, of course, are positive. Uh, the nominal dilution factor is known, positive and bonded. And of course, this, this disturbance associated to the, to the dilution factor is, of course, unknown. The growth rate is also a positive um, con continuous and bonded function, but it's also uh, considered that it's unknown. And this Rx, so index x, is an known continuous dependent of x 
the biomass dynamics and its bond. So we have some structure, of course, of this growth rate, and this growth rate have some specific structure. And of course, in this in this work, we have some specific um, structure of this growth rate. We have the growth rate type mono node, that is this this in equation twelve. We have some mu max, that is the specific growth max of this uh, growth rate. We have the dynamics of the substrate, and this K sub index X is the half separation contracts that describe the phenomenon phenomen of growth line limited by the lack of substrate. So we have, of course, a control input that is this uh, D that depends on this disturbance theta. That it, this disturbance theta is associated, for example, we have in these bioreactors, uh, I don't know, an electro valve uh, on one type of these valves. And of course, these type of valves have some uh, disturbance associated, for example, some calibration errors or something like that. We have, it's not precisely. So of course, we have some disturbance. Now, we're going to uh, analyze some of the, the slightly mode observers that we use in this paper. Uh, we present some, um, is observers to, for the dynamics, this omega have this mu, that is the growth rate, minus this theta, that is that our uh, disturbance associated to the dilution factor. So we are going to use this observer, that it's a sliding mode observer, that it's a super twisting algorithm. Of course, we have the super twisting algorithm here. This K1, it's the our, this K1 and K sub index two, are the, our gain gains of our sliding mode observer. We have this, this, and these are our sliding surface applied that to the superficial algorithm. Of course, we are going to propose some sliding mode observers in this five equation. This first proposal, we have some uh, equation from our estimate, estimation of our theta parameter that it that have no dynamics. So we are going to propose something later to improve these results in five. Of course, we are going to, to add some um, adaptive gains to our algorithms. And this is our proposal. We have some this this C and this bar theta const, um, gains to these algorithms that have some dynamics. So we have some adaptive gains, add some adaptive gains to these observers, of course, and we have some improvements. Of course, we are going to show the results of these observers. And we, you, we use some Simulink 2023, and we have some parameters here that we use. And these are the notation that we are going to, to see in the next figures. And we are going to use red, from the sliding mode base observer and from the adaptive gains we are going to show you in blue. We propose some scenarios, different scenarios, in a nominal case where have no disturbance, a disturbed case that we have a 10%, 10% error from the nominal control input that it's our dilution factor. And we have some disturbance scenario that have some different types of disturbance from some different times, for example, so from 0 to 15, from 15 to 30, from 35 to 50. We have some different types of disturbances. And of course, we have uh, we use different um, type of uh, growth rate. In this, in this third e scenario, we use this type of growth rate that have some dynamics. So, we are going to uh, show you the, the results. In the nominal case, with no disturbance, we have some good results with the two observers. We have in red the base sliding mode observer. And of course, our best results are our adaptive version. Of course, you can see that the adaptive versions converge, of course, more and more faster than the base sliding mode sliding base small observer. Sorry. And of course, we, when we have some disturbance, for example, in this case, the disturbance in this case is theta, that it's 0 0.01. We have 
more shadowing effect with the baseline mode observer, but our adaptive versions keeps our converge time, but also have more less this, this gap between the real parameter and the estimated one. So, of course, if we have some better estimation of our um, disturbance, we have better estimation also in our estimate of our metal concentrations of the bioprocess. This graph is about the growth dynamics. So, of course, we have some better results. And our final scenario, we present some different types of disturbances. And, of course, our adaptive, adaptive version some better performance. So the conclusion of these works is that we present some observer based on sliding modes. And of course, we present some adaptive versions that, adapt, that present adaptive gains. And we present different scenarios that allow us to determine the robustness of the presented observers. So we have some references. And thank you for your attention. So much. Yeah. Any question? Manuel? Questions? In the yes. in assumption assumptions. Yeah. It is very important uh, to know the, the observa observability conditions or not in this case. I think that um, that we we present a nonlinear uh, system, and we need to analyze the um, equilibriums of this this system. So I I am sure that we need, of course, we we uh, to talk about uh, observability, and this we need to to analyze there. The, the equilibrium points about these these uh, conditions and these parameters to to the to to the to the dynamical model of, of that we present. So uh, talking about this this uh, specific point, uh, um, I think that we need to 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 analyze these these points. So. In this case, the sliding mode. Uh, for observers. Question four is a simple model three. The observability conditions uh, should be not necessary, but you don't need the structure of the systems. We need we need the structure of the system because of of course uh, one of the conditions that we need, for example, in this observer. Uh, this is not uh, our proposal because this is one that it's presented in uh, another work. We present this observer and this one, and of course, in these two proposals, we need, of course, the estimate of X, that is the biomass, and of course, to decouple this equality, we need the assumption that we need two measurements, that it's the biomass and our substrate. So, it, of course, this is a, a, a algorithm that it's based on on, on the dynamical model. We need some parameters of the dynamical model, of course. So um, we have some assumptions, for example, that, uh, for example, this 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 uh, equation about the, the uh, sliding surface is that we, of course, you are going to say uh, this x hat, yeah, it's going to be um, undefinite if we have some zero here, but we have some uh, conditional that if we have some x hat that don't tend to zero, we have some convergence to the algorithm, to the STA algorithm. But of course, we need some assumptions to the, to the model. Rather than a question in fact comment, uh, in the recent years, it was proven that it is feasible to study the observability properties of the specific rate in further only can be shown 
the observability properties of any reaction rate and external disturbances uh, by applying some developed theory by Denis of China and, and the Heine Moreno. It can be shown that both dynamics can are used strong observable by specific conditions. One of the most uh, uh, restrictive ones is it is required the same measurements or it, it requires the same measurements between the it, it requires to in order to estimate the the unknown variables we assume that it is I don't know m we need exactly m measurements in order to estimate it. Uh, it is one of the main advantages of this approach. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Questions? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, we have the last talk by Oscar Federico. Is in this? Okay. Yeah. Online. Good talk. Okay. We can believe that Oscar is. is it's, it's okay, Oscar? It's okay. Okay, yes. Oscar? You hear me, Oscar? Yes, of course. Okay. Please, Oscar, go ahead with your presentation. Yep. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, I don't know. If the, in this okay. computer. Excuse me. It's, wait a minute, please. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 We can see you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Oscar Federico Garcia Castro from Groups of Robotics and Man Advanced Manufacturing in Staff at Kiyo. Uh, today, I will present the paper titled Neural, model, Neural Network Model of Continuous of Robots Based on Wakeness Equipment with Adaptive IRR. Well, uh, which neural model replicates the behavior of a soft robot when it deforms to follow a trajectory or raise a desired position? The continuous soft robot challenge due to nonlinear dynamics for hyperelastic properties and variable stiffness. And this paper introduced a wavelet based neural network or wave net with an adaptive infinite and pulse response filters to model the system behavior. Um, I will briefly overview the formulation of the continuous of robot and the identification process of these dynamics. Then I will share the result from numerical simulation and conclude with key takeaways and future uh, directions. Um, from a mathematical perspective, there are difference between rigid body and deformable bodies, but the way to model them using neural networks is essentially the same. Here is two dimensional diagram, diagram of the soft robot and it exhibits viscoelastic behavior essentially for its functionality with pressure chambers adjusting to the length and curvature, providing flexibility for many applications. Um, the continuous of robot behavior is modeled using Lagrangian formulation, which we convert into a state variable a representation and establish in prior works, creating a foundation for our approach. And we are meant to approximate the dynamics of the continuous of robot, uh, which is hyper, uh, hyper elastic and driven by pneumatic chambers. Uh, and the wave net uh, IIR is employed to approximate the system opus using measurements of input and output signals. Uh, by the neural modeling, we refer to approximate the, uh, the model, the approximate the dynamics of a physical system using neural networks. In this world, the wave net AAR develops the activation functions to map generalized force uh, based only on the robot's positions. Uh, in other words, the idea is to make the wave net AAR replicate the behavior of the continuous of robot using only a partial information from the system, in this case, the input and output signals. <clears throat> in this case, the well, in the figure four, uh, the WebNet IRR structure is uh, present. In this case, this uh, kind of neural network consists of four layers. The first one is the input layer, where the neural network takes or receives the general force uh, for, for the continuous of robots. In the hidden layer, we use 
um, wavelet functions and activation functions to map the, the input. And the third layer is a first approximation using linear combination. And the last stage is a filtering stage. Uh, in this case, the few five show uh, us the general structure of uh, the IAF ear filters. And we have two loops, uh, feedback loops, one corresponding to the output of the wavelet and the other from the filter on output. Uh, this process, I'm sorry. Um, well, this process is represented by equation five and includes five parameters, the scaling and shifting parameters of the uh, activation functions the waves of the neural network and the value on the feedback and feed forward coefficients for the filters. Additionally, one advance of using wavelet function and activation function is that a model wavelet generates a family of functions via scaling and translation using the equation six. Uh, this allows for adjusting the shape of the function for different rock frequencies of the input signals and in this work, we use the RAPS1, uh, which means a rational second order polynomial. Um, well, uh, remind the wavelet uh, error has five parameters, the scaling and shifting of the wavelet, the waves of the neural network, and feedback and feedforward coefficients for the filters. All these parameters are uh, uh, adaptable. By minimizing the cost function defined as the average approximation error, using the gradient descent, we derivate the adaptation rule for each parameter uh, as specified in the equation A. In this case, uh, each parameter has, its has a specific learning rate that the uh, designer uh, must, uh, must uh, choose and appropriately. We validate the purpose uh, using a soft robot construed by a colleague, uh, defining a desired, a desired uh, position for the end effector. In this case, it's a circle with a diameter of 24 diameter centimeters in the plane, uh, in the A is plane. And the table uh, one uh, indicates uh, some preparing, physical properties of the continuous soft robot used. Um, for the wavelets, uh, in this case, we have two inputs and two outputs because we uh, we we approximate to coordinate the length and the curvature, and we use uh, we use uh, six neurons with a nine order uh, filter. Yeah. Uh, each network has a specific value of scaling and shifting operations. Uh, the waves are in let's say uh, are set to zero, and feedback and feedforward coefficients uh, are initialized uh, randomly. So, given an input signal, there is exists a generalized position in the form curvature and longitude. Uh, which form the small position of the vectors to be learned by the WebNet IIR. The hard display on the screen shows the position display uh, uh, of the continuous of robot and demonstrates how the outputs of the WebNet IIR align with these values within a matter of seconds, where the approximation error remains bound uh, with a relative error at 6.16% uh, for a uh, length and moral is 3% for curvature. And the Cartesian position are obtained successfully, uh, where initial errors may seem significant. They are only represented during the first, uh, the first few seconds. Uh, following this brief period, uh, the approximation improves, indicating the effectiveness of approach. Uh, well, up to this point, we conclude that WebNet ear models uh, demonstrate a high precision in modeling the dynamics of complex nonlinear systems such as continuous of robots. And this feature produces a neural model for nonlinear hypervirtualistic, uh, visualistic, uh, continuous of robot, uh, achieving accurate modeling with a tax cycle and with a minimal error compared to the literature. However, uh, 
there are certain limitations that need to be addressed. For example, the initial toning of scale insisting on learning parameters, uh, learning rates forward, is crucial due to local minima in the parameter space, requiring careful adjustment to map the time frequency and time and frequency terms. But we are working to implement the neural modeling of continuous robot in three dimensions and the effort of focus on achieving a 10 millisecond sampling rate with this challenge to do latency of current tracking system like OptiTrack. Um, this all, thank you for time, for your time and your attention. Thank you so much, Oscar. We have um, time for questions. Question, no question for Oscar. Questions, no questions? Okay, no questions, Oscar. Very good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Oscar. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> That's it. This is the end of the session. Thank you so much, all of you. And see you. Thank 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 you.